All right, next lecture, we're going to talk a little bit um, about how uh, blood pressure is measured and monitored clinically. So some terminology here um, that is used to describe techniques that are um, used for monitoring the efficiency of your blood circulation and blood flow. Uh, vital signs, including you're taking a patient's vital signs, that includes, you know, what is their pulse? You take the pulse, you know, where you're feeling the pulsation of the blood as the blood vessels expand at systolic pressure and then relax at diastolic pressure. And of course you can measure blood pressure. Other vital signs include respiratory rate and body temperature as well. The pulse again, when you feel a pulse, you're actually feeling that pressure wave that occurs as the ventricles contract and they squirt blood into the arteries and that expands the walls of the, um, the arteries. Radial pulse is probably that's the most common location for taking a pulse and that's you know right here at the wrist where the uh, the radius bone on the lateral side of the forearm meets the uh, the carpals the wrist bone. So you have the radial artery at that location which is um, pretty close to the skin so you can feel that pulse wave occurring at that location. Now pressure points are any location where you have larger arteries that are close to the body surface so you can feel the pulse in those locations. You guys know there are other places where you can feel your pulse like up here in your carotid arteries that's another location and those are also places where you can compress to stop blood flow. Like if somebody has a, a big wound and blood is gushing out, those are places where you can squeeze on arteries, their larger arteries, and prevent blood flow. So this diagram from your textbook is showing you these pressure points, and these are areas where the pulse can be most uh, easily palpated. That term palpated refers to being able to um, feel something by touch. And these artery names, if you have not already started the blood vessel anatomy, um, you will be learning these artery names shortly. All right, when we measure blood pressure, um, now there are lots of blood pressure monitoring machines that are available now. The traditional method is... <clears throat> Okay, uh, systemic arterial blood pressure is traditionally measured using an auscultatory method. That means you're listening using a sphygmo manometer. So that is the traditional blood pressure cuff that you've seen where you use a stethoscope and you stick it under the cuff and you listen for uh, the sounds of blood flow. Now a lot of people think that um, when you use a blood pressure cuff, and you stick a stethoscope under that blood pressure cuff that you're listening to the heartbeat itself and that's actually not what you're listening to. You're actually listening to the sounds of Korotkov, cough which um, what you're hearing, alright, so you put a blood pressure cuff um, typically this is done um, you know just above the elbow you have a artery in the upper arm, the major artery passing through here is called the brachial artery, which you'll be learning about over on the blood pressure anatomy side. You cover the upper arm in a blood pressure cuff. You inflate the cuff. And what that does, eventually you reach a pressure. You know, if you imagine, here's your brachial artery in your upper arm. Eventually, the now that uh, blood vessel has blood pressure in it. The blood is exerting pressure up against the walls. You keep squeezing the cuff, squeezing the cuff. Eventually, that radial uh, brachial artery closes off. All right, so then you stick a stethoscope under the blood pressure cuff. You're listening, you're listening. Eventually, the pressure in the cuff matches the blood pressure itself. You have equal amounts of pressure. The cuff is squeezing this way. The blood pressure is trying to squeeze outward that way. You know, at some point, you hit the point where those two are equal and um, as the blood pressure cuff continues to relax 
eventually your blood pressure exceeds the cuff pressure a little bit. And you start to hear blood flow through the brachial artery. That's what you're hearing with the stethoscope. It's actually that blood flow. Now think about it though. You have systolic pressure. You have this diastolic pressure. So the blood pressure in the artery has a maximum. It has a minimum. And for a period of time, the blood pressure cuff is going to, the pressure in that cuff is going to be below the systolic, but higher than the diastolic. Okay, so when the blood pressure is at the diastolic in the artery, that artery opens and blood squirts through the artery. But when the blood pressure is at the diastolic inside there, the cuff pressure is higher and it closes the artery back off. And then you have, imagining that my little hand puppet here is the brachial artery. It's systolic, it's open, diastolic, stylic, it's closed. And every time that's happening, you're hearing blood spurt through the artery. That's what you're actually hearing with the stethoscope when you're measuring somebody's blood pressure. All right, now when the pressure in the cuff drops enough, then um, it falls below the systolic pressure. At that point, the artery is always open, and so you no longer have this spurting of blood as it's passing through the artery. The blood flow just becomes uniform, and you don't hear that anymore with the stethoscope. So if you ever do measure somebody's blood pressure with a sphygmo manometer, you will hear a pulsing sound but due to the blood spurting as that artery is opening and closing, opening and closing, uh, due to the competing pressures between the blood pressure cuff and the blood pressure in the brachial artery. All right, so the highest pressure again, of course, is called the systolic pressure. And, um, you know, in a healthy individual, that's 120 millimeters of mercury or left or less. And you hear that when that blood first starts to spurt through the brachial artery as the pressure in the cuff drops below the systolic blood pressure that's competing with it. The diastolic pressure normally around 80 or less and um, the way that you record, you record the diastolic pressure by looking at the little dial, the gauge, and noting the lowest pressure at which you still hear those spurting sounds. Once you hear, no longer hear those spurting sounds, then um, the pressure in your cuff has fallen below the diastolic pressure in that blood vessel. Okay, um, blood pressure varies, you know, even among normal healthy individuals. And we've already talked about before how when you're lying down, your blood pressure goes down. That's because your heart is not having to fight against gravity to circulate blood to all of your body parts. So that's a normal drop in blood pressure. Physical exertion, um, you increase your blood pressure. You got to increase blood flow to your tissues to support the exertion. Your uh, cells need more oxygen gas. They need more nutrients. They're making more waste that have to be circulated away. When you get emotionally upset, this also triggers an increase in blood pressure. That's normal. Um, Emotion, being emotionally upset is a type of stress. Your body increases sympathetic nervous system activities. That's completely normal. Fever, uh, blood pressure will go up during a fever. The reason for that is when you have a fever, your body temperature, of course, is going up. Um, higher temperatures increase metabolism. Metabolism involves chemical reactions. Those chemical reactions happen faster at a higher temperature. If you have a higher metabolism, you need to increase your blood pressure. You need to increase the blood flow to your uh, tissues. Blood pressure variation um, can also occur due to age. You know, we've already talked about how as you get older, you tend to get these fatty plaque, um, plaques that build up in your arteries that increases peripheral resistance to blood flow. That's going to increase your blood pressure. That's not a surprise. Also, if you gain weight, Remember we talked about how blood vessels lengthen. Longer blood vessels have greater peripheral resistance to blood flow. That also increases your blood pressure as well. There can be variations due to gender, race, mood, uh, posture, etc.
All right, and I'm going to try to find, hopefully I'll be able to find a, um, a virtual blood pressure measurement activity for you guys to play around with um, as part of this unit as well. So you can kind of put that into action since we're not actually in a classroom where we would get to use real stigma manometers and measure each other's blood pressures. All right, lecture number 10. This will be a really important lecture on hypertension and hypotension. Um, and the problems that can be associated with those in patients who are experiencing those conditions on a longer term basis.